And now, here's your host of Shaping Success, Wes Tankersley. What is up, everyone? Welcome to Shaping Success. I'm your host, Wes Tankersley. Today, we're going to do a little bit of a solo episode. This is going to be coming out after a couple of interviews that I recently did. Um, I've been hooking up with Mark England, who is uh, the head coach of Enlifted, and he has introduced me to a bunch of different guests. So we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, also wanted to remind you, uh, thank you to Nikki Pavlovich for p- supporting on Patreon, but those episodes have some bonus coverage that come at the end of it. So when I hit and I stop the recording of the actual episode, I'm uploading at the end, I'll hit record again and then the guest and I will have a conversation if they are okay with that. And then I post that to Patreon. So if you are a Patreon for as little as $4 a month, you can help support the show and that will help me upgrade and help me to make it better for you. Helps me pay my guy who edits it, helps me pay the guy who makes the clips. It also helps me to get better equipment so that the sound is better, the cameras are better, those types of things, because I wanna bring you a really good show, but you know I have to pay for a lot of other stuff in my everyday life. And this, I guess we'll call it as it is, is a hobby for now, right? We sell merchandise, we sell clothing, um, same thing, sorry, redundant, Um, but we sell stuff. We got stickers, we got hats, we got gear that you can purchase, which also goes to helping the show get better. So we do have one Patreon right now, but we would love to have a bunch more. And uh, Nikki Pavlich wanted to say thank you for doing that. But let's get into this. You know, um, I wanted to kind of give you a little bit of a hot take on something that I just witnessed that I was just talking about. If you follow me on TikTok, you've probably already seen the video, and this is not going to come up for a couple days or a couple weeks, but we're going to talk about it now. I recently purchased a rototiller because I needed something to work the ground on my three acres that we will be moving on to in a couple months here. Um, make some garden beds. I want a rototiller around these trees that we planted so that I can create a better environment for them, for watering them, for growth, right? So a little background on the rototiller. So I went and I bought one and I put it together and it needs gas and it needs, you know, I got to put the oil in it and I got to run it. Well, I don't have a gas can here. I probably have one in the storage unit, but I didn't have time to go run over 45 minutes to go look and check in my storage unit to see if I can find it. Plus I can't get in the damn thing. Um, anyway, I'm like, oh, I'll run over to AutoZone real quick. And I live in Boise and I run over to AutoZone to go see if I can find a gas can. I walk in, they've been open for about an hour. There is no one in sight. Normally when you walk into a building, you walk in and you see them and they greet you. You're like, how are you doing? What's going on? I mean, this is like, I go to Jackson's convenience store, which is right across the street. And every time I walk in, like I'm trying to not have them talk to me, but they say hello. And that's their job. That's what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to greet their customers and check you out. The funny thing that's going on here, and I don't know if it's going on in every state, which I don't mind having the option of self-checkout, but it's an option right? Like you have the option. You can go to self-checkout or you can go to the checker and have the checker check you out. Sometimes there's a lot of things that you don't want to do the self-checkout with because you know, you got a big order. Well, now you're going to scan the whole damn thing. Well, recently a couple of the businesses around here, Albertsons, for instance, has gone to no checkers in the store. So essentially they have like 10 self-check islands you can go in there and you can self-check yourself and then they have like two or three people watching those islands. And this is kind of the same situation. Like I'm used to that at Albertsons. That's the way it is. But I walk into an auto parts store and a lot of times you don't know what you're trying to get, right? Like I was getting a gas can. That's super simple. Walk in, find it, get it, you know? Usually there's someone at the door. Hey, what can I help you with? Oh, I'm looking for a gas can. Oh, it's all the way in the back corner. Cool. Instead, I have to search for it. I have to dig for it. I have to find it. Not a big deal. I found the damn thing. So I'm thinking... All right, it's cool. I found what I'm looking for. I don't I don't like to, if I don't know you, don't like to talk to you kind of thing, so it's okay. But that's going to bring me to the point of this whole conversation. So I'm like, no big deal. Okay, I found what I needed. I'm headed up to the front. There's a guy sitting in the back in the counter, and then there's two other people standing in the back. Can you guess what they were doing? They're getting paid, by the way. And their primary job should be to help customers, I would think but their head's buried in their phone. And I just kind of observe and I look around and I see, oh, there's a self-checkout. I stand there for a second. I don't know if I really want to self-checkout. I'd like to, you know, have them talk to me. Guy looks up, 
guy looks down. He knew I was there, didn't even offer to check me out, and didn't want to come talk to me. He was busy looking at his phone. He had other things going on. So where in the hell has customer service gone? You know, and, and I bet you if you start just observing things, because this is the type of thing that you go through, like being more observant in your world and the things around you. And it was funny because I prefaced the post on TikTok with, call me a boomer, call me Gen X. I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of flack for this, but we have created a world of poor communicators. People would rather avoid confrontation. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm guilty of it, but this is the way that this has become. And being a person who's in a customer service business, because I, I am a salesman, right? Like I go to people's houses. I have conversations with them. I talk to them. I figure out what they need. I discuss their options with them. I provide them with a service. I know that I have to be a good communicator. And I am a good communicator. It's just there are certain times when I don't want to. But this world around us has become so uncommunicative. I don't know if that's a word. I just made that up maybe. But they've stopped talking. They've stopped listening. There is no interaction, social interaction between most people anymore. And I know this because I deal with people who are like that. Instead of making a phone call anymore, think about how many times you text. Email is kind of a dead thing, but there are people who all the only way they communicate is through email. I have a friend that I went and sold window coverings to. I went to his house. He started texting me. And um, I went over to his house and um, I had tried calling him because I wanted to discuss with him what I should bring as far as samples for his new window coverings that he wants in his home. And it was amazing. He's like, we were talking and he's a couple years older than me. And he goes, I go, yeah, I tried calling you. He's like, sorry, I don't answer my phone. If you text me, I'll respond, but phone, not so much. And that's just kind of the way it is anymore. Like you can't have a regular conversation. And I feel like you can't find the inflection in a person's voice. You can't really tell how they're feeling. And that is not really effective, an effective way of communicating. So what do we do? We change words. You know, I was watching a video the other day and someone told their dad slap. And you're like, what the f slap? What? Like, hey, we're going to go to the grocery store. All right, cool. Slap. Instead of saying sounds like a plan, they're saying slap. And it started with, with chat rooms, right? Because we're in these chat rooms. And here I am. I'm really going to date myself. But you guys know I'm 42. You know I'm a, I'm a Gen X or Gen X adjacent is what some people say. Because I'm whatever chart you look at, I'm either a millennial or Gen X. I consider myself Gen X. But I have some millennial tendencies. It's kind of weird because that's I, I feel like everyone does. But I know how to use a computer. I have a degree in education technology for crying out loud. So I know how to do that. But like when I was in high school, when Yahoo Chat came out, that's right, Yahoo Chat, which is like nothing because Google, Google just destroyed everything. I mean, we're talking about like AOL, Yahoo Chat, ICQ Chat. Like you can't talk. They can't hear voice. And so what happens is you're saying LOL. What the hell does LOL mean? You know, this was the conversation back in the day. Oh, it's laugh out loud. Okay, cool. So instead of, you know, we started to get into this where we can text inflect, right? Um, you can tell people that, you know, that's funny. I'm laughing, right? Like just kind of giving that, that thing off. And so it, it's crazy, but that's where it all started. Like that's where it began. That's where the lack of communication began, but you still had to communicate, right? Like at that point in time, cell phones were super new. They didn't have texting ability. And you had to still make a phone call and talk to someone. I mean, hell, people still had landlines. And it's funny because every time I walk into a house, they're like, and someone goes, oh, yeah, that's my landline number. You can't text it. You're like, what the hell do you got a landline for? And it still happens. Trust me. I see it because I have to communicate with these people sometimes. And, um, But it's funny, though, because you'd rather avoid a confrontation. And through text, there's less confrontation, right? If you start getting mad through text, you can text it, but you don't have to deal with the person in general, like you don't have to hear their voice getting mad. You don't have to hear them yell at you. You don't have to hear how pissed off they are. And that's it. I mean, that's the problem. We are creating ineffective communicators in this world right now. And it's, it's somewhat our fault because as technology expands, they're starting to get worse and worse. 
Um, you know, three years ago when I started this, it was interesting because I joined Instagram and, you know, um, I started getting people communicating through me through the DMS or through the chat, you know, in, in the background. And I met my friend, uh, Jay and Brian and Zach through this, but they were voice texting and I had never done that before too. So that's a, that's something that's not newer, but something that's coming around. And Gary Vee talks about it all the time. Voice is going to take over. Elon Musk talking about AI going to take over. It's like voice is great in my opinion, because now I don't have to text you typing it out and everything is going hands-free, but being able to use voice, then you can understand when someone is getting heated in the conversation or when someone is laughing because they can laugh on the voice text or whatever it is, like you can figure out what it is and you can effectively communicate with that person because if they're starting to get pissed off, you can either bring it back a little bit or lie on it. So that's my hot take for today. And I know that you probably weren't looking for that, but it's something to really think about. How effective of a communicator are you and what is your communication style? And everyone's different. And that's part of the thing about becoming you know, a manager of your life, you have to learn how to effectively communicate with each and every person, because if you cannot, what are we going to do? So I wanted to talk to you also a little bit about the interviews that I've been doing lately. Um, I think that words are very important. And it's funny how we use words to talk ourselves out of things. And so I have been talking with Mark England, and he's introduced me to quite a few different people which we will be having a lot of those people on the show. They come from different walks of life. Um, Mark is a former educator like I am, but now he educates in a different way. And a lifted is kind of talking about or showing you how to use your words in a way that are effectively going to help you to be able to continue to move forward. How you tell yourself things, how you see the world, how other people see you. Teaching you how to adjust the way that you think. And that's what I really love about it. And it's funny because I talk about these things all the time. I just don't use those tools that they have um, the way that they use them. And it's amazing how you can use self-talk to talk yourself out of something. And I did a great interview with Brandon. Um, and Brandon came on, Brandon Miller, and he came on and he told me, he said, we talked about, he's a baseball coach and I was a baseball coach. And I liked talking about the fact that as a baseball player, because there's so many different things that go into playing the game, you can talk yourself in and out of a lot of things. And the way that you, your language, your body language, the way that you act, what you tell yourself can either make or break you in the game. And what I mean by that is you think about this, you've got a shortstop, okay? Okay. He is one of the infielders, if you don't follow baseball. But say he is fielding a ground ball that has gotten thrown to him. He did not follow all the steps to correctly field the ball. It goes between his legs. Or he fielded the ball cleanly, but did not follow all the steps to throw the ball directly to first base. He has two choices, right? He can have a very short memory, or he can dwell on that and tell himself, I'm not good enough. I can't do that again. I don't know what I'm doing out here. And, and that's the thing. That's how words destroy you. So by changing the verbiage of how you say something, you can be successful or not successful. And that's what I really like about this. There are things that you can tell yourself over and over again. You can dwell on many things that you've said to yourself that can make or break you. You have to have a short-term memory and you have to learn how to have that conversation. And if you listen to the last episode that came out with Mark, because he, he was on about a month ago and he's coming back on in a couple of weeks or, well, it'll be, you'll hear this episode after that happens. Um, but he came on and he started talking about techniques that you can use to teach yourself to change the way that that narrative is, because we all have a victim mentality. And I'm saying that boldly because it is the truth a victim mentality. It's never what you did for the situation. It's always what someone else did to you. I'm going to say that again. It's never about what you did. It's about what someone else did to you. What does that mean? So effectively, that means that 
when you get in certain situations, you put yourself in those situations and you allow those things to happen to you. The best way to not have that happen is to not allow those things to happen to you. Oh, really simple to say. Really simple to say, but think about it, okay? How many times have you heard someone talk about a relationship that they have or seen a relationship go on and they're saying, well, I can't find someone who is the right person for me, right? And we're talking about relationships right now. By the way, it is my 23rd anniversary today. So we can have the victim mentality in a relationship, all right? You can think that every single situation that you have had been in in a relationship is someone else's fault. They treated me that way. They gaslighted me. They are a narcissist. They are this. They are that. And when you change that verbiage, I attracted a narcissist. I got gaslighted. I did the Like, when you will realize that you are in the steering of that vehicle that you are in, when you're the person who's in charge of what's going on, and these things happen to you over and over again, maybe it's not them. Maybe it's you. Once again, maybe it's not them. Maybe it's you. So that's the thing that we don't think about. And I'm not saying that you may not ever be a victim. I mean, you think about the things that can happen to you. There's a possibility that you are a victim, right? Like if someone comes and robs you, you were a victim of being robbed. Now, can you apply this to that too? Like, did I put myself in that situation? No one wants to go out and get robbed. But going out in the middle of Compton in the middle of night with $1,000 in your pocket is probably not a good idea, right? And I don't know, but I'm just saying that. Like, there's my, there's my Gen X coming out again because you think about, like, all the Ice Cube and NWA stuff where they're talking about Compton and how bad it is and drug deals and all that crap going on. So, anyway, that's, sorry, disclaimer. But think about that. Like, if you're in an area where there's a high crime rate and you're hanging out there, you've created an easy target to be a victim, right? That's not what you're intending to do, but it has happened. So that's that victim mentality, right? Like you can you can apply it that way. It doesn't mean that you're going out looking for that, but if you constantly hang out with people who are doing bad things, guess what's gonna happen? Hmm, bad things are probably gonna happen to you. So changing that narrative, changing that verbiage and thinking about how it's more you than it is them. How to point the finger at yourself. And I, I did this a lot of times in my life. It's like, these things are happening to me because of what I did. When I was an assistant manager at Les Schwab, uh, which is a tire company in the Northwest, I went and got a job at Les Schwab. I worked there for 11 years. I wanted to get promoted. I wanted to get promoted so bad that I was very company oriented. And I would take the first thing because this is the way it was. So you would... You would get certified and then you would run for stores. And if a store came open, you would run for it. It didn't matter if you were a good fit or not. The idea was that you go and you work with that manager. You figure out who they are. You figure out if you mesh together. Like if you would be a good a good partnership of, I'm going to run things the way that he wants to run things, right? And then the manager ultimately makes a decision. So he could have 10 people running for a store. So instead of trying to let things just happen... I forced things to happen. I had choices, right? Like I could have put myself in a better situation than I put myself in when I got selected. I took the easy way because I knew someone who was just certified as a manager. He was looking for an assistant manager. He was going to a store that was not very um, desirable because that's what you did. You just took the first store you could get. And he wanted to, he had good intentions. He wanted to turn it into something good. But I knew when I worked with them before that we weren't a good fit. But he talked me into running for a store because he thought that we were a good fit. Because he would rather work with someone who he knew than someone who he didn't know. And it turned out being a bad situation that I put myself in by trying to force it. So thinking about that, that's, that's where that goes. Like, What are you doing to try and force the situation that might not be a good thing? A lot of times it's like, I got to get married, right? So in a relationship, we're trying to get married all the time. Like, let's get married. I mean, not so much now, but that was kind of a thing when I was growing up. It's like, I'm going to find me 
someone to put a ring on it. You know, like you're going to find someone that you work with. You're going to, and sometimes there's like, I've been looking for so long. I'm going to force every situation that I can make to make that person want to be married to me. Right. And as you go through that and you do that and you try to force the situation, it's like this person did this to me. This person did that to me. Well, point the finger in the other direction. You're looking for something they're not looking for. And it very well could be you. And that's, that's the thing. It's like that victim, that victimization of yourself may be something that you did to yourself. So when you say that someone did something to you, I want you to think about this. And this is where I'm going to leave you with. I want you to think about that. When it's someone else's fault, change the narrative and flip it back on yourself. Say it a few times and think about it. One of the things that Mark talked about was writing it down. People don't want to write things down because then it gets it out of your head and onto the paper and in front of you and you really have to look at it. And breathing is very important when you do that. Um, you know, breath is something that we do not think about very thoroughly. And your brain is supplied by oxygen. And if you deprive your brain from oxygen, are you going to think very well? Probably not. And he talked about like how people when they're pissed and I've thought about this because I got very mad one time, like the maddest I've ever been. I can remember the time when it happened. Someone did something to me that I thought was unthinkable. You shouldn't have fucking done that. And I was pissed and I'm thinking about the way that I was reacting. My body was clenched. My fists are clenched. I wanted to fight this guy. I was so mad. He wasn't around, but this was what happened to me. I got so infuriated by it. I was so mad about it. I stopped breathing. I get this vein in my forehead that's popping out. It happens. My wife's like, you're pissed. I can tell you got that vein, Um, (laughs) which is, I mean, it is what it is, but that's what happens. Like you can tell, like your blood's boiling, you're mad. And what do you do? You stop, you stop breathing. And the only thing you can think about is the thing that pissed you off and how you're going to fix that situation. And basically you're going to beat that guy down and whatever. And you think about that. And if you don't think that's true, go and look at these angry people who are protesting, no matter what they're protesting. And I see the meme of the the lady with glasses that's like pissed off that someone told her that, you know, something she didn't agree with. And, I, you know, it, it's, it's amazing. Like, I'm, you, I know if you've seen the meme, you know what I'm talking about. But they always write different things over it. And the reason why they're so mad is because they, you know, they're just so angry. They can't control this. They're not thinking clearly. You can't think clearly when you breathe, when you don't breathe, you're depriving your brain of what it needs to think clearly. So I encourage you to go back and listen to those episodes. Megan Henry was awesome. Olympic skeleton racer, uh, division one athlete, field hockey track in the military. Just a great story. Brandon Miller, awesome baseball coach, muscle, muscle specialist talked about how like you may like say your neck hurts, your neck may hurt, but in reality, the thing that's causing the neck pain could be down below and in trying to figure those things out. And then how you talk to yourself about like an injury or things like that and, and get through that. Very good episodes. Very cool stuff. Mark has been on twice now and very good, um, tools and we may have a new sponsor and I may or may may not uh, be in diving into something different as well you know and maybe maybe I'll get into some coaching something to think about again I wanted to say thank you for hanging out with me Um, we'll have some more guests coming up you know we're doing interviews here and there and we got some of these solo episodes coming out but I look forward to having that conversation. And I think that you guys know that it's about helping you to be better. And that's what shaping success is all about. And in order to do that, you need to hear someone else say it because sometimes if you've walked a mile in their shoes. So if you have any, if you have any guest ideas, email me Wes at westankersley.com. You know, please like share and review help support the show. If you want to move forward shirt, which is the new thing you can go check out on social media, hit me up in the DMS. You can go find it on the website, but it's going to take a little bit of work to get there. We're still working on westankersley.com. You can see the show. You can find the Patreon. You can find all that stuff at westankersley.com. Sometimes it takes a little digging. We're still, we're upgrading the website right now. My friend Wolf is uh, working on it and I appreciate him for doing that. Appreciate you, Nikki Pavlovich for being a Patreon supporter and helping me write the show notes and all the things that you do. 
Jay, thanks for doing the awesome editing. You can catch Jay Finning and myself on One Drink Wednesday, every Wednesday at 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. And uh, until next time, I challenge you to find the shape of your success. 